anointing the throne of God. Kuendea enzi ya Mungu. The highest class. Kile kiwango cha juu zaidi. Of angels. Cha malaika. In Acts chapter 6 verse 15. Katika Matendo ya Mitume mlango wa 6 mstari wa 15. The highest class of angels. Ile tabaka la juu zaidi la malaika. Acts chapter 6 verse 15. Matendo ya Mitume 6 mstari wa 15. Echo says versículo 15. Para español. Matendo 6 mstari wa 15. He says, anasema, all who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen. Watu wote waliokuwa wameketi katika baraza wakimkazia macho Stefano. And they saw his face was glowing like the face of angels. Wakaona uso wake unang'aa kama uso wa malaika. So he said, kwa hivyo anasema, that the highest class of angels kwamba kiwango tabaka la juu zaidi la malaika with glorious face wakiwa na nyuso za utukufu glorious feet the glory pours as they walk miguu ya utukufu utukufu unapakika wanapotembea he say anasema in the face of the glory of jehovah god katika uso wa utukufu wa jehovah mungu They have to cover their glorious faces. Inabidi wafunike nyuso zao za utukufu. There is a conversation the Lord is having with America. Kuna mazungumzo ambayo Bwana ako nayo na majimbo ya moja Marekani. And he's telling America. Na anaambia Marekani that I'm crying out for reverence. Kwamba I'm crying out for the fear of God. I'm crying out for humility. I'm crying out for contriteness. I'm looking for the people that will tremble at my word. Nina watafuta watu ambao watatetemeka wanaposikia neno langu. I want honor again. Ninataka heshima tena. By bringing Jesus to the cross. Kwa kumleta Yesu msalabani. And rapture in the curtain. Na kupasua ile pasia. Never ever. Kamwe katu. Did I did I mean to throw away the fear of God? Sikumaanisha kwamba ni kutupilia mbali hofu ya Mungu. Never. Kamwe katu. Did I intend? Sikukusudia. To throw out the holiness of God. Kutupa nje utakatifu wa Mungu. I am looking for reverence. Ninatafuta heshima. A people that will revere me will revere me for who I am. The Lord. Watu watakaoni heshima kwa kuwa mimi ni nani? Bwana. There is a conversation. Kunayo mazungumzo. He saying, anasema, the church, kanisa that gets to climb the glorious stairs. Ambalo linapanda zile ngazi za utukufu. Then goes before the golden throne of God. Na kwenda mbele ya enzi ya ya dhahabu ya Mungu. And meet God face to face. Na kukutana na Mungu uso kwa uso. He saying, anasema, that there are certain fundamentals. Kwamba kuna matakwa fulani. Certain requisites. Kunayo matakwa fulani. She must be whole. Lazima awe nayo. Reverence. Heshima. It is so powerful ni nguvu zaidi that they in the face of the glory of God kwamba katika uso wa utukufu wa Mungu they are saying wanasema with our glorious faces as angels of the Lord na mnyuso zetu za utukufu kama malaika wa Bwana we are not even worthy atustahili hata to lift up our faces before the Lord kuinua nyuso zetu mbele za Bwana with our glorious feet na miguu yetu ya utukufu We are unworthy to even show the feet. Huyu atustahili hata kuonyesha hiyo miguu. Before the Lord. Mbele zake Bwana. He say, anasema, those that appear before the throne of God. Wale ambao wanajiwasilisha mbele ya enzi ya Mungu. When you appear, unapojiwasilisha, and all of a sudden you stand before the cloud. Na the glory. Binfu unasimama mbele ya wingu, mbele ya utukufu. You cannot help. Hawezi But see the unworthiness of man. Basi unaweza kuona kutostahili kwa mwanadamu. The unworthiness of human effort. Kutostahili kwa bidii ya mwanadamu. Ah. Ah. All of a sudden, kafla binfu, you are dismantled. Umeharibiwa. And yet on the earth you are somebody, right? Na ile hali duniani ulikuwa mtu sivyo? You go by your title, right? Unaenda na cheo chako sivyo? Blessed people. Watu wabarikiwa. He say, anasema, the angels at the throne. Malaika katika enzi. 
when they see the glory of God wanapoona utukufu wa Mungu it is their unworthiness ni kutostahili kwao their unworthiness kutostahili kwao that strikes their hearts ambako kuna ikonga mioyo yao am i talking to somebody je nazungumza na mtu so what is this worthiness that the current church is busy fronting before Yahweh basi ni kustahili huku kupi ambapo kanisa lilianguka linaleta mbele ya Yahweh where you find preachers in Accra Ghana they preach like this mali ambapo unapata wahubiri kule Accra Ghana wanahubiri namna hiyo pocketing wako wameingisha mikono what is this because ni nini hiki kwa sababu Isaiah say Isaiah anasema that at the front position when you appear you appear before the cloud kwamba katika mahali pa enzi unapojiwasilisha unajiwasilisha mbele ya wingu but the cloud is already here lakini wingu tayari liko hapa in other words what am i saying kwa maneno mengine nasema nini that if you cannot show reverence while you are worship on the earth there is no way you can convince me that when you get there you are going to show reverence kwamba ikiwa uwezi kuonyesha heshima ukiwa unaabudu hapa duniani hakuna vile unaambia kwamba utaonyesha heshima utakapo if you cannot show the fear of god while you are still worshiping me on the earth there is no way you can convince me that when you get to heaven that you will begin to show fear of god Maya. Ikiwa uwezi kuonyesha heshima ya Mungu unapoabudu Mungu hapa hakuna vile utakapofika huko unaweza kunishawishi kwamba utaanza kuonyesha hofu ya Mungu kamwe katwa iwezi hakuna vile utaniambia hakuna vile utaniambia eti ukifika huko kwamba ukifika huko eti ndio sasa utaonyesha hofu ya Mungu eti ndio sasa utaonyesha hofu ya Mungu hey, hey. hey say anasema that there is a certain character Kwa, can you sit down a moment Jemna aza keti chini kidogo. So, if you Isaiah sees Isaiah anaona the highest class of angels. Kile kiwango cha juu zaidi cha malaika. Tremble before the Lord. Wanatetemeka mbele za Bwana. And this generation. Na hiki kizazi. In Lagos. Kwa Lagos cha Lagos. In Abuja. Kule Abuja. In Accra. Kule Accra. They say hi God. Wanasema hi Mungu. Hi God, how are you today? Ah, niache Mungu leo. They want to appear like that. Wanataka kujiwasilisha namna hiyo. And God is saying. Na wanasema na Mungu anasema. That the road, the measuring road kwamba, is already here. Kwamba mwanzi wa kupimia tayari uko hapa. And is measuring the worship na, in the house of the Lord. Na anapima ibada katika nyumba ya Bwana. And there are certain measurements threshold you must strike. Na kuna vipimo fulani ambavyo lazima uvipate. Otherwise, last if you look what happens. Tazama kinachotendeka. Otherwise in Matthew 22. Ndio last hivyo katika Mathayo 22. In Matthew 22:11 to 14. Mathayo 22 mstari wa 11 hadi 14. Otherwise he comes and says this. Last hivyo anakuja na kusema hivi. But when the king came to see the guests. Lakini mfalme alipoingia ndani kuwaona wageni. He noticed a man there who was not wearing the right clothes. Wedding clothes. Akamwona mle ndani mtu mmoja ambaye hakuwa amevaa vazi la harusi. Friend he asked. Rafiki akamuuliza mfalme. Amigo mia. Mona me. Amerishali. Friend. Rafiki. 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 They were friends. Walikuwa they knew rafiki. one another. Walijuana moja na mwingine. Friend he asked. Rafiki akauliza. How did you get in here without wedding clothes? Uliingiaje huko ndani bila vazi la harusi? The man was speechless. Yule mtu hakuwa na la kusema. And then he ordered them. Ndikisha akawaamrisha. Tie him hand and foot. Wamfunge mikono na miguu. And throw him out. Na kumtupa nje. In the darkness. Katika giza. Where there is the gnashing of teeth. Mali ambapo kuna kusaga meno. Look at this now. Tazama hii sasa. He say. Anasema. There is a measuring going on. Kuna kupima ambako kuna endelea. The Lord is measuring worship now. Bwana anapima ibada sasa. Because of time. Kwa sababu ya wakati. He has now seen the guests. Sasa amewaona wageni. And is measuring their faith. Na anapima imani yao. He is measuring their worship. Anapima ibada yao. In Australia. Kule Australia. He is measuring their righteousness. Anapima uhaki wao. And is measuring their holiness. Na anapima utakatifu wao. Over the world. Kote kote ule mwinguni. He is measuring the garment of righteousness. Anapima vazi la uhaki. And he says, Na anasema, What comes the 
standard of God. Anapokuja katika kiwango cha Mungu. Let me put it better. Hebu niweke bora zaidi. When it comes the entry of the church into heaven. H E A V E N. Inapofikia kuingia kwa kanisa mbinguni. Then there is an error. Kutostahili katika uso wa utukufu wa Mungu. Let us go back to Isaiah 6 and see Hebu. what other message is the Lord transmitting to this generation. Hebu turudi katika Isaiah 6 atuone ni ujumbe gani mwingine ambao Mungu anapeana katika kizazi hiki. How awesome a generation. Ni kizazi cha ajabu kiasi gani. The Lord may speak with you face one on one. Kwamba Bwana akazungumze nanyi mmoja kwa moja. He goes on to say. Anaendelea kusema verse 5. Mustari wa tano. He says, Anasema, Woe unto me, Ole wangu mimi, I cried, Nimeangamia, I am ruined, Nimeangamia, For I am a man of unclean lips, Kwa kuwa mimi ni mtu manye mido wa mamichafu, And my eyes have seen the king, The Lord Almighty, Na mimi naishi katikati ya watu wenye midomo michafu nayo na macho yangu yamemwona mfalme bana mwenye nguvu zote. Can we stop there and focus on me? Je, tunaweza komea pale na mnilenge? Hey. This is amazing. Hii ya shangaza. Now Isaiah, sasa Isaiah, after seeing the splendor and the radiance and the might and the supremacy and the power and the authority of the throne of God. Baada ya kuona ukuu na uweza na mamlaka na ukupa wa enzi ya Mungu and how the holiest angels are serving and they are ministering before the Lord na jinsi ambavyo malaika watakatifu zaidi wanahudumu mbele za Bwana the next thing that strikes Isaiah i would call it the first thing kitu cha kwanza ambacho kilimgonga Isaiah nitakiita kitu cha kwanza the first thing that strikes Isaiah kitu cha kwanza kilichomgonga Isaiah is the sinfulness of sin ni udhambi wa dhambi Haleluya Haleluya He saying Anasema But when anybody comes face to face with the throne of God Kwamba wakati mtu yote anapokuja uso kwa uso katika enzi ya Mungu with the glory of the throne pamoja na utukufu wa enzi He saying Anasema The first thing that strikes you kitu cha kwanza kinachokugonga is the sinfulness of sin ni ile udhambi wa dhambi I am starting to get closer to you America nimeanza kuwakaribia Marekani in South Africa na Afrika Kusini Kenya Kenya Ghana Ghana everybody kila mtu I'm beginning to move closer to China Nimeanza kukaribia Singapore, uchi. Malaysia. Singapore, Burundi, Malaysia, Rwanda. Burundi, Rwanda. I'm beginning to get closer to you. Nimeanza kukuja karibu nanyi. He say, anasema, that when Isaiah stood, when one stands right in front of the throne of glory, the throne of God. Wakati Isaiah alisimama wakati mtu anasimama mbele ya enzi ya Mungu. The first thing that strikes you, kitu cha kwanza kinachokugonga Is how sinful you are. Ni jinsi ulivyo mwenye dhambi. Ai, ai. Look at this now. Tazama hii sasa. Why did Isaiah say? Ni kwa nini Isaiah akasema? I am a man of unclean lips. Mimi ni mtu mwenye midomo michafu. Kwa sababu when Isaiah saw the cloud and the glory at the throne. Wakati Isaiah alipoona wingu la utukufu wa Mungu katika enzi. And he saw the highest angels. Na akawaona malaika wa kiwango cha juu zaidi. Ministering and preaching the gospel. Wakihudumu na kuhubiri injili. They are preaching the gospel there. Wanahubiri injili pale. Celebrating the holiness of God. Wakisherekea utakatifu wa Bwana. They are saying holy. Wanasema mtakatifu. Holy. Mtakatifu. Holy is the Lord of hosts. Mtakatifu ni Bwana Mungu mwenye nguvu. In other words they are saying. Kwa maneno mengine wanasema. That when it comes to appearing before the throne of God. Kwamba inapofikia kujiwasilisha mbele ya enzi wa Mungu. Why there are many wonderful attributes of Jehovah kukiwa kuna sifa nyingi zaidi za Yehova for example kwa mfano he says is the compassionate god anasema kwamba yeye ni Mungu mwenye rehema but isaiah does not hear that lakini isaiah aogopi hiyo he does not hear compassionate Asi. compassionate compassionate is the lord of hosts no Asi. he does not Asi. he hear holy Asi. holy holy is the lord of hosts
Asikii kwamba ni mwenye huruma mwenye huruma. Anasikia mtakatifu mtakatifu ni Bwana mwenye nguvu zote. While is the God that sent us Jesus, the covenant of the grace, he is gracious. Ni Mungu ambaye alitutumia Yesu, agano la neema. Yeye ni mwenye neema. But Isaiah, lakini Isaiah does not hear the highest angels celebrating the graciousness of God. Asiki malaika wa kiwango cha juu zaidi wakisherekea ile neema ya Mungu. The God that sent Jesus. Mungu aliyemtuma Yesu. He does not hear that. Asiki hiyo. So the angels are ministering the gospel. Kwa hivyo malaika wanahudumu injili. And they are saying na wanasema that when it comes to coming to standing before God. Kwamba inapowadia kuja na kusimama mbele za Mungu. Out of all those things. Kutokana na mambo hayo yote. You are known to be martyr, to martyr to the Lord, to be martyring to God. Am, ambayo ni muhimu ni muhimu mbele za Mungu yanajalisha mbele za Mungu. He say, anasema, however on this one now, hata hivyo katika hii sasa, holy mtakatifu, holy mtakatifu, holy is the Lord of hosts. Mtakatifu ni Bwana mwenye nguvu zote. You want to come here? Na ikiwa unataka kuja hapa, holy mtakatifu, holy mtakatifu, holy you must be. Ni mtakatifu lazima uwe mtakatifu. Jamulielewa standing before the throne of God. Usimama mbele ya enzi ya Mungu. But why does Isaiah say, "Oh, I am a man of unclean lips." Lakini kwa nini Isaiah anasema, "Ah, mimi ni wale wangu, mimi ni mtu mwenye midomo michafu." Look at this now. Tazama hii sasa. If you read the book of Mark chapter 7. Ukisoma kitabu cha Marko mlango wa 7. Look at this. Tazama hii. This is amazing. Hii yashangaza. Mark chapter 7. Marko mlango wake wa 7. Mark. Marko. Mlango wake wa 7. Don't know whether it's 21 or get there. I'll let you know. I'll read from verse 20. Tasoma kwanza mstari wa 20. Once you read, you tell, tell me amen. Ukiwa tayari mniambie amina. You can read the whole but I want verse 20. Unaweza soma yote lakini nataka mstari wa 20. It says, anasema, and he went on. Akaendelea. Akaendelea kusema. And he went on. Akaendelea. What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. Kile kimtokacho mtu ndicho kimtiacho unajisi. From within out of men's hearts. Kwa maana kutoka ndani ya moyo wa mtu comes evil thoughts. Utoka mawazo mabaya. Sexual immorality. Uasherati. Isaiah is standing before the throne. Wakati Where you want to go? Isha anasimama mbele ya enzi mali ambapo mnataka kwenda. Want to be. Ole wangu mimi. For I am a man of unclean lips. Kwa kwa mimi ni mtu mwenye midomo michafu. Why? Kwa nini? Because. Kwa sababu Isaiah already witnessed. Isaiah tayari alishuhudia how the highest angels of God. Jinsi ambavyo malaika wa kiwango cha juu zaidi wa Mungu. They are ministering holiness. Wanahudumu utakatifu with their lips. Pamoja na midomo yao. He called the Lord. Mbele za Bwana. And he made he, he made him understand. Na he was made to understand. Aliweza kufahamishwa kusababu kuelewa. But if they can pronounce it with their lips. Kwamba ikiwa wanaweza kuita kuitaja na midomo yao. Then out of the abundance of their hearts. Basi kutokana na utele wa mioyo yao. Holiness cometh. Utakatifu ulitoka. The zeal for holiness cometh. Ile ari na kuya for holiness cometh. Kupenda utakatifu inatoka. And Isaiah Naye Isaya all of a sudden crashed kabla binfua akakwisha when he remembered alipokumbuka that he is a man of unclean lips kwamba yeye ni mtu mwenye midomo michafu and he lives among the people that have inherited the DNA from Adam na maishi miongoni mwa watu ambao wameridhi DNA kutoka kwa Adamu They have already inherited. Tayali wameridhi. The vileness. Ile unajisi. The sinfulness. Ile kuwa na dhambi. 
from Adam. Kutoka kwa Adamu. So he just befell him. He said, "Wow." Kwa hivyo alisema tu wao. They are pronouncing the holiness of God. Wanatangaza utakatifu wa Bwana. From the abundance of their hearts. Kutoka katika utele wa mioyo yao. And yet for me. Na ile hali kwangu mimi. These are the things that characterize the hearts of men. Haya ndio mambo ambayo yako katika mioyo ya watu. Immorality. Usherati. Lewdness. Ufisadi. Malice. Usuda. Slander. Matukano. Murder. Uwaji, theft, wizi, corrupt everything there. Fisadi kila kitu ndani. So, if you that's why he cried out. Ndio sababu alilia. So, who unto me? Akasema ole wangu mimi. I am finished today. Nimeangamia leo. Today I am da- I am da- I'm over. Leo hii mimi nimeangamia. My life is over. Maisha yangu yamekwisha. Because I have stood before the Lord. Kwa sababu nimesimama mbele zake Bwana. And my eyes have seen. Na macho yangu yameona. The Lord of hosts. Bwana mwenye nguvu zote. Mfalme. And yet. Na ile hali and clean heart. Mimi nina moyo usio safi. And clean lips. Midomo ambayo ni michafu. Can we see a little step forward what transpires in that gospel that is preached there and then how the church now also has a platform and a venue. A venue. Je, tunaweza kuona jinsi ambavyo hiyo injili iliendelea na jinsi ambavyo kanisa sasa liko na njia. Haleluya. Haleluya. But you say, lakini anasema, that when you come before the throne of God, kwamba unapokuja mbele ya enzi ya Mungu, the first thing that strikes you, jambo la kwanza linalokudonga, is the holiness of God. Ni the uta- awesome holiness of God. Ni utakatifu wa ajabu wa Mungu. Number two, jambo la pili, the light of that katika kuzingatia hiyo he say anasema that the glory from the throne kwamba utukufu kutoka katika enzi becomes like a torch unakuja ka- and begin to shine into your heart na unaanza kuangaza katika mioyo yote and reveal the sinfulness of man na kufunua dhambi ya mwanadamu thereby demanding a certain process hivyo basi demanding a process hivyo basi kudai na kuitisha hatua fulani a process hatua fulani Step by step I told you. Hatua kwa hatua niliwaambia. Let us see what happens first. Hebu tuone kinachotendeka zaidi. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah mlango wa 6. And Isaiah is seated in front of the throne. He is right as appeared before the throne. Na Isaiah amejiwasilisha mbele ya enzi. I repeat verse 5. Narudia mstari wa 5. Woe unto me I cried. Ole wangu nikalia. I am ruined. Mimi nimeangamia. For I am a man of unclean lips. Kwa kwa mimi ni mtu mwenye midomo michafu. When I live among a people of unclean lips, meaning by association I have also inherited sin. Nami ninaishi katikati ya watu wenye midomo michafu kumaanisha kwa kuhusiana nimeridhi dhambi. Wow. Wow. The prophet of the Lord has not separated himself. Nabii wa Bwana hajajitenga. Mwenyewe. So my association with these people kwa kuhusiana na watu wake they have rubbed sin on me wameingisha dhambi ndani mwangu is somebody walking with me je mtu anatembea pamoja nami and he says na anasema the perilousness the danger ile the deadliness of appearing at hali where you want to go ile hali ya kutisha ya kujiwasilisha wakati mahali ambapo mnataka kwenda hatari ya the deadliness the danger hatari ya kujiwasilisha of appearing before the throne ya kujiwasilisha mbele ya enzi where the church wants to go mali ambapo kanisa linataka kwenda and how na namna gani there is a process kuna hatua for which i'm here ambayo kwayo niko hapa but the church would have to go through kwamba kanisa lazima litapitia as a requisite kama matakwa for prayer kwa ajili ya and he says here na anasema hapa Isaiah 6 I continue. Isaiah 6 anaendelea. Verse 6. Mstari wa 6. Then one of the seraphim, one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hands. Ndipo mmoja wa wale maserafi in his hand akaruka kunijia akiwa na kaa la moto linalowaka mkononi mwake. Which he taken with tongues from the altar. Ambalo alikuwa amelichukua kwa koleo kutoka madhabahuni. With it he touched my lips he touched my mouth and said Akaniguza nalo kinywa changu na kusema See this has touched your lips Tazama hili nimeguza midomo yako Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for 
Uofu wako umeondolewa na hiyo dhambi yako imesamehewa.